pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this regularly scheduled meeting of Bowling Green City Council. We are all very pleased that you're here this evening. What a great looking group we have with us tonight. Uh, Kay, would you please begin by calling the roll? Osbacher? Here. Harold? Here. Hollenbaugh? Here. Jeffers? Here. Robinette? Here. Roland? Here. Zanfordino? Here. We do have a very, very special presentation this evening, so we're going to jump forward in our agenda to Mayor Edwards in order to facilitate this recognition. Thank you very much, Mr. President, members of council, and all assembled. We do indeed have a very special act of recognition tonight, and I'm, I'm so pleased to uh, uh, participate for join, having you join with us for this, uh, this wonderful occasion, this act of recognition. But before doing that, I just want to say we have also a very special guest in our audience tonight, among many special guests, but uh, Patrick McCauley, uh, the, our head of District 2 of the Ohio Department of Highways. We don't get to see Pat very often. Um, he has so many places to go uh, throughout this whole very large district that you oversee, but we especially appreciate your presence here tonight, Pat, and thank you so very, very much. Uh, with that, I'm going to turn the program over now to our wonderful Municipal Administrator, Lori Treader. Lori, please. Good evening, I am Lori Treader. I'm the Director of Safety and Municipal Administrator for the City of Bowling Green, and I am so delighted to be here for this special recognition and to read uh, some special recognition notes on behalf of Mayor Edwards. We're here to recognize the collective <clears throat> response and efforts to save the life of Robert Shirey on July 17th of this year at the ODOT District 2 office. This recognition is at the request and recommendation of the Bowling Green Fire Division. Presenting this award with me this evening will be Mayor Edwards, Chief Mormon, Robert, thank you. I was just about to invite you up. I'm wonderful that you are here, um, and we so appreciate you joining, joining us this evening. We're going to ask our special guests to please come up and join us here. I'll call you by name. Andrew Beaverson, Jessica Bittinger, guess she's not here this evening, but we still want to recognize her, Ross Eckler, Jeffrey Ellis, <coughs> Michael Cruz, Phoenix Neal, it's okay if you want to bring the little one with you. That's okay. It's okay. We're very family friendly here. Plus, it's a special moment. That's neat that child to share. Jacqueline Nort. Donald Satowski. John Taylor. and Trevor West. On July 17th of 2019, the Bowling Green Fire Division received a request for an ambulance to respond to the ODOT facility on Poe Road for a cardiac arrest with CPR in process. Medic One and Engine One responded, and upon arrival and to their surprise, the cardiac arrest subject, Robert, who's here with us, was sitting upright and talking. Robert's co-workers stated they witnessed him collapsing to the ground. They immediately assessed his vitals and found he was not breathing and he had no pulse. Robert's co-workers quickly formulated a plan and immediately started CPR, sending someone to the closet <coughs> to get the AED. The AED was retrieved and was applied to Robert and began to analyze the cardiac rhythm. It confirmed that a shock was needed. At that time, one shock was given. Shortly after the shock was given, Robert started breathing and a pulse quickly returned. Robert received approximately 3.5 minutes of CPR. Robert is standing here with us today because of the quick actions of his coworkers, of these people standing here before you, in administering and knowing CPR 
and appropriately utilizing an AED. Each individual will now be awarded with the mayor's commendation for their significant and selfless act for the betterment of this community and in recognition of their valor. Mayor Edwards, Chief Mormon, Robert. <clears throat> I want everyone to see what this looks like, and we'll be presenting this to each and every one of the <clears throat> individuals before us right now. So we'll start first. Thank you so very much. that we wanted for folks we can try to bring people in if we need to. Everybody got photos? Yes. Yes. Let's crunch them together. Shake hands with our, our council members. They'd like to congratulate you as well. Congratulations. Thanks so much. Great work. Congratulations. On, be on behalf of City Council, I'd also like to um, e extend our gratitude for your selfless or selfless um, response to a, a, an unbelievable situation. I'm not sure that most any of us would have the, uh, the the calm and the skills necessary to respond to help a coworker in the way that you did. In the world that we live in today, it seems like it's uh, maybe easier sometimes in a situation like that to turn the other way, but you didn't, and God bless you. Thank you all so much for what you've done. Thank you. Would you like to say anything? Uh, I can. Um, You're welcome. Please come up if you would. Uh, uh, yeah, we. Uh, it's a real honor to have you with us, and I know yeah. how much your folks. Again, I, I, I do want to thank the city of Bowling Green and Mayor Edwards for recognizing your folks. I, Robert wouldn't be alive today had it not been for them. And, um, it's uh, I think it's well deserved and. And again, thank you, and we really appreciate uh, all of you giving us the time today and recognizing their efforts, because all the credit goes to them. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Thank you so much. Falling back um, on our agenda. The minutes of the meeting uh, that was held on October 21st, 2019 were presented to council prior to this meeting. Are there any additions or corrections to these minutes? Seeing none, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes the minutes are approved as presented. Katie, we have correspondence this evening. Uh, yes, distributed to you prior to the meeting, from Finance Director Brian Bouchong is a listing of budget transfers for the month of November, and those require your approval. Is there a motion to approve the budget transfers? So moved. 
Second. second. Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. <coughs> Motion passes. The budget transfers are approved as presented. <coughs> And then also distributed to you um, electronically, and I believe you have a copy in front of you, um, is a an appointment to a board and commission as requested by Mayor Edwards. And this appointment is a new appointment to the Planning Commission, Joe Phillips, for a three-year term ending 531-22. And he will be filling the unexpired term of um, Dr. Hess. And that requires your approval as well. Thank you. Before we proceed with this, I did want to just take a very brief moment to comment on the service of Dr. Gary Hess. Gary has been involved in our community in a variety of different ways for many, many years, and he's had a positive impact in so many different ways in our community. Certainly, um, we were sorry to hear of uh, Gary stepping away from the, the Planning Commission, but I did just want to acknowledge his service and thank him for having done so. He has really been a tremendous asset to our community. So having said that, is there a motion to approve the appointment um, as presented by the mayor? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion passes. The appointment is approved. We welcome Mr. Phillips to the Planning Commission. That's all I have. Great. Thank you, Kay. We've already covered uh, special presentations. Kay, is there any lobby visitation this evening? Uh, yes, we just have one. Um, Mary Hinkleman. Good evening, everyone. Mary Hinkleman with the Bowling Green Chamber of Commerce. Um, I'm here tonight with <clears throat> our official poster for the holiday parade. Um, one thing I'm super excited about, the featured image in the center um, was something that Kevin Pierce from Ace Hardware worked on. I had mentioned to him that it would be nice if we had something that was our own and he came up with it. So if you see Kevin down at Ace Hardware, please tell him you saw it and that it, I, I just think it's absolutely wonderful. So our parade is pretty much rolling right along. Um, November 23rd, we'll step off at 945 in the morning. Um, when I left tonight, we were just over 90 units, which was what we thought we could fit into a two-hour live um, broadcast. So now we're working on the timing. Um, it's just come together like a dream, and I'm excited to say the road is finished and beautiful. And thank you guys so for working so hard to get that done. I know it wasn't specifically for our parade, but... <laughs> I'm going to say thank you anyway. Um, the city of Bowling Green, uh, again, logistically, I can't believe the work that they put into this for us so this can happen for our city. And it is a great way for us to promote the city of Bowling Green, whether it's people that are being honored, organizations that are active in our community, um, elected officials that have decided to be a part of the parade, um, businesses. Um, the commentary is going to be wonderful. So now it's up to all of us to get out there and say, you know, do our little wave thing in the parade and um, make the city of downtown Bowling Green just look absolutely wonderful that night, uh, that evening, uh, that day. And um, yeah, let them know we represent. So I'm going to have these posters here. If you've got somewhere to display it where it will get high visibility, um, please take one tonight. And thank you all. Thank you, Mary. That's all. Moving on to the introduction of new legislation, please. Mr. President. Mr. Jeffers. The Finance Committee have a resolution transferring previously appropriated funds. Ordinance amending and adopting section 76.23 C and D and section 76.24 of the codified ordinances of the city of Bowling Green, Ohio, regarding operation of meters coin deposit and time mechanism and parking time limits and amending and adopting section 35.70 regarding city fees and fees charged for services and authorizing the municipal administrator to enter in a contract for parking equipment and declaring an emergency. Thank you, Bruce. Mr. President. Mr. Zamperdino. From the Transportation and Safety Committee, uh, we have an ordinance authorizing the municipal administrator 
to request proposals and enter into a contract for the sur for the purchase of transportation service for the Bowling Green Transit Program. Thank you, John. <clears throat> Mr. President. Mr. Hollenbaum. I have a resolution from the Community Improvement Committee. It's a resolution authorizing the mayor of the city of Bowling Green, Ohio, to file an annual application plan and a five-year consolidated plan to execute a contract upon grant application approval under the Community Development Block Grant Entitlement program is authorized by the Housing and Community Development Act of 1974 as amended. Thank you, Mark. <clears throat> Moving on now to our official reports. Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, <clears throat> Mr. President, members of council and all assembled. Uh, Mr. President, I just want to thank you for your comments about uh, Dr. Gary Hess. Um, I've had the great joy of knowing Gary since 1971 and working with him at the university. And um, I've always marveled at uh, Gary's commitment to the city. He's well recognized throughout the world of diplomatic history. And he could have come up with 101 reasons why he would hate to be diverted from his research interests and his teaching and his writing and so forth. But he was very committed to this community and I just always marvel at how much time and effort he put in, especially on the Planning Commission and through other avenues as, as well. Uh, he just couldn't, you couldn't ask for a more dedicated person uh, in terms of uh, serving in the best interests of, of the city. And uh, I've had a chance to, to visit with Gary and, and I understand a little bit his reasons why he wanted to step aside at this time from the Planning Commission. And, uh, but he's doing just fine. And, uh, and I know he's going to maintain, along with uh, Rose, a keen interest in what goes on before city council, this city government, and in the community at large. So uh, uh, thank you very much for your, those comments there. And, uh, and he also, I should know, wrote the last history of uh, BGSU and did an excellent job. And that is something I keep close at hand, too, referring to it quite often. So <clears throat> this uh, Wednesday, November 6th, at 1130 at the Worcester Green, starting at the Worcester Green, we'll have the fourth annual Not In Our Town Peace March. And um, uh, this has been um, uh, <coughs> put together by the, the, the university and the community group working with Not In Our Town. Emily Dunapace is the community representative. She's just been doing an outstanding job. Our own Heather Saylor, as uh, each year, she's devoted a great deal of time and effort not only to this endeavor, but to other things representing not in our town as well. And Heather, we're grateful for your leadership there. But uh, this will be uh, starting out at 1130, first at the Worcester Green. President Rogers will be speaking there very briefly. Then we'll all march to the Union Oval, and there'll be some brief remarks there on the Wednesday, again, starting at 1130. And I would hope that some of you would be find it possible to join with me uh, on this uh, very special occasion. Uh, the fourth annual Not In Our Town Peace March. So, um, Also, uh, I should note that the steering committee um, for the Worcester Green will have a very important meeting this Wednesday, November 6th, at 4 p.m. at the Wood County District Public Library. And so uh, uh, we're, we're working away. I hope uh, come next June we'll be able to have a uh, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> so you'll be there, Mr. Mayor, at that time. I uh, have a very special uh, uh, anniversary celebration celebrating the uh, uh, all the time and effort and the history of, of, the, of the Worcester Grand have an official inauguration at that uh, uh, time there and um, I'm unfortunately we've had a, a, a resignation from the Historic Preservation Commission I just received it today uh, from Raina Calderon <clears throat> and she has her reasons and so forth and uh, uh, but uh, she was representing the east side so I hope uh, any member of council that can think of a person that would want to be involved with this very, very important uh, effort. I know all of you feel very committed to historic preservation, and uh, we've got some wonderful people working away on it with Heather and working with the people in Columbus. We know that 70, seven, 74 communities in Ohio are certified uh, for local government, certified local government classification for historic preservation, and I would love to have 
this community be number 75, or by the time we might do it, it might be number 76, whatever. I think it's important, uh, but uh, they're putting a lot of time and effort on this. So, um, Mr. President, members of council, this concludes my report, but if you have any uh, questions for me, uh, uh, I'd be more than happy to try to answer them. And thank you so much for participating in this very special act of recognition. This is a, a great story and some really committed people, and uh, uh, it's amazing what they can do and, and demonstrate leadership in very, very special ways. So, And I can't, I know you feel the same way I do uh, about AEDs and learning, you know, to, to, to resuscitation and so forth, all those very special stuff. We do have an AED box right out here, and uh, Dave and Jody Anderson have, have been so helpful in the community of raising money uh, for AED. We've got them throughout the downtown area and other places and in the schools and so forth. So we're, we're grateful for their leadership, and I know they're going to be reigniting their, their campaign here sometime <coughs> in the not-too-distant future, too, because we can certainly use more AED devices in, in the community. So, again, thank you. Thank you. Unless you have questions. Other questions for Mayor Edwards? Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. <coughs> Planning Director, Ms. Treader. Oh, Municipal Administrator, Ms. Treader. You got promoted. Sorry. That's what happens when you look ahead. After all of that for nothing, I'm so sorry. Are there questions for Lori? Thank you. Now, Planning Director, Ms. Saylor. Questions for uh, Heather. Thank you. Parks and Recreation Director, Ms. Otley. I just have one item. I do want to remind people that our next community focus group meeting is next Wednesday, I believe, November 13th. I believe that's next Wednesday. 7 o'clock at the community center, uh, free child care available. And um, the focus for that focus group meeting uh, is Ridge Park and Carter Park. So that is all I have unless you have questions. Questions for Kristen. Thank you. City Attorney, Mr. Marsh. Other questions for Mr. Marsh? Thank you. Utilities Director, Mr. O'Connell. Uh, two things. Um, next uh, week on November the 12th, uh, it's a Tuesday at 5 o'clock, we'll have our utility budget presentation to the Board of Public Utilities and to City Council. So we're wrapping up our budgets uh, this week and hopefully have them delivered uh, by Friday because that's, <laughs> that's the next day, day oh, before Lord. the meeting. That's all over by that point, right? So uh, just, just to remind you, that's, that meeting will occur on Tuesday the, uh, at 5 p.m. The, the 12th, uh, the 11th is a holiday, so that's why it's on Tuesday. And then uh, the other thing was we were, um, we were given the award from American Public Power Association for the Smart Energy Provider. This is the first time that they've offered this um, designation of, for an award. Uh, in the, the whole country, there were 67 that were selected, and there were only two in Ohio, uh, Bowling Green and Westerville, that received the designation. So uh, this, this revolved around, or revolves around uh, uh, smart energy program structures, uh, energy efficiency, and distributed energy programs that we offer, um, environmental and sustainability initiatives, and customer experience or uh, education that we, put, that we do. We work with Amanda Gamby, our sustainability coordinator, uh, quite a bit on the application and uh, looking at things that we do now, um, trying to benchmark ourselves against what other utilities are doing across the country. And we weren't sure how we were going to score, but we did. We scored above the minimum. I think it's maybe a 70. We got in the lower lower 80s. So there is room for improvement. We're not at the top of the list, but um, we did score high enough in all the categories to receive the designation. So. Um, I think it's a, a big deal to say, you know, we've, we benchmark ourselves against other utilities and we, we receive that recognition. Um, we've had other, rec other recognitions from APPA in the past, such as the R RP3 award or the Re Reliable Public Power Provider award. And then we've also gotten the, uh, an excellence in reliability uh, certificate from our past performance of outages uh, or lack of outages, I should say. Um, so, uh, again, we're trying to do the right things and, and push programs where we can. So that's all I have unless you have questions. Questions for Mr. O'Connell. Congratulations on that award. It is a big thing. Yeah. It validates all of the great work that's being done in the utilities department every day. Yeah. So please express our uh, consideration or our, our best wishes and congratulations to everybody in your group. I would do so. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Public Works Director, Mr. Kraft. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, sorry to rain on the parade a little bit, Mary. Um, we have a little bit of work to do downtown yet. Um, some valve box, manhole adjustments, all those get paved over. Then you adjust those uh, after pavings to grade so that our guys can get through that in the winter. Minor work. Um, one corner, the Chase Bank corner, when they poured that, it did rain that day. We told him we're not happy with how it looks. We're concerned about the the uh, water to cement ratio and the concrete. So <coughs> that may happen either yet this year, not around the parade, or yeah. even in the spring. So the weather right now doesn't seem to be on our side. So we'll see how that shakes out in the next couple of weeks. Um, leaf collection will start on the November 12th, the day after Veterans Day. We're going to get after it through Thanksgiving and then take another look and see where we're at and what the how the leaves are behaving this year. Last year, a lot of the leaves hung on late. And then um, make announcement how we'll make our last pass, probably working into more like mid-December this year to uh, hopefully get all the leaves and not be plowing snow. Out on uh, East Wooster, of course, roundabouts are in full operation. A little bit of work to do yet on the uh, utility work on the north side. Of course, there was a big hole there last week where the old pump station used to be. Things I have yet to do is the driveway to that pump station. The multi-use path still needs to be put in and paved, and then pave the multi-use path all the way over to the Dunbridge Roadside. What you see right now is just the base course. And then, of course, some more lighting. The decorative lighting needs to come all the way up to Alumni Drive. So they're fighting the calendar and a little bit of weather there to get that done. But I'm sure uh, between ODOT and Miller Brothers, this has been a great partnership on this project all year, and I'm sure we'll get it done. Uh, just a little reminder, next Monday, with it being Veterans Day, there is no refuse collection, so it'll be delayed a day next week. So. That's my report. Any questions of me? The questions Mr. for Brian. Chairman, is the multi-use or use path the same as the bike path? Yeah. Yeah. You can jog, walk, rollerblade, ride a bike on it, uh, whatever you want. And uh, it'll it'll connect you to the Stroh Center corner and take you all the way over, over past to the Dumber Road intersection. So, yeah. Yep. Hey, Brian, uh, you've talked um, for several years about encouraging people to leave the leaves in their yards and not take them to the street, chop them up, compost, mulch, whatever. Yeah. Do you just have any sense that uh, you're seeing a little bit more of that? Well, it's hard to gauge because it seems like, I mean, there were times where we'd have to leave where we're picking up leaves to come pick up Maine and Wooster before the trick-or-treaters. And we were full in the leaf collection by that time. Now we're not even starting until sometime in November. But it, it looks like some people are even mulching and then bringing the mulch pile out to the curb for us to pick up. And we just assume maybe that first go around, just leave that in your yard because it's actually good nutrients for your yard. It goes to your the quality of your yard and that sort of thing. You're actually throwing a good product away. I think some people are getting it. And we also recognize that there are just some yards that are saturated with too many leaves. I think I think the message is getting out. I think it's just going to take a long time to get people. I personally just did mine yesterday and went from completely covered to green and you got to go over it several times you just don't take one pass go slow mine has the hatch on the mower where it'll, it'll just chop them up and uh next time i may have to spread them out a little bit more and do some more in the backyard sort of thing but so i think people are coming around just going to take some time to get people to consider doing that for their yard love them and leave them <laughs> great thank, thank you, you brian <clears throat> that concludes our official reports this evening do we have any council committee reports I do have a couple <clears throat> items um, under the heading of Council Committee for reports. First of all, I wanted to announce some dates, um, upcoming dates for a Finance Committee budget hearings um, and Council meeting schedules. Um, as everybody is well aware, the administration is moving into budget preparation, and we wanted to just get these dates on Council members' calendars so that everybody can participate in the budget process. On Monday, December 2nd at 6 p.m., we will conduct a finance committee budget hearing um, here in, uh, city, here in council chambers. There will be no regular city council meeting that evening. It will be just a finance committee meeting, but certainly we hope that all council members will attend. On Monday, December 16th, that is a regular uh, city council meeting evening, we'll then uh, present the budget. And on Monday, December 30th at 5 p.m., we will have a special, special city council meeting to conduct regular business and year-end business. What was the third date? Sorry. Uh, December 30th at 5 p.m. So I will follow up with an email um, to everybody on council to 
so that you can get these dates on your calendars, but we did want to uh, get that out this evening. Um, <clears throat> secondarily, in regards to an agenda item this evening, um, item number, <clears throat> ordinance number 8808, this should look familiar to council. Um, this is our ordinance related to um, parking operations. And I just wanted to mention this because at our last meeting, there was some discussion um, about parking policy changes and implementation of kiosks and other and other changes in the parking de um, department. And there was some uh, <clears throat> um, discussion last meeting about uh, the, the, the potential need for a follow-up meeting to once again discuss these items publicly. Um, in the time since our last council meeting, there have been several conversations that have taken place with individual council members and administration members um, in an effort to answer questions and provide all of the information that was being requested as it related to council actions that were taken in January. So the consensus after those conversations took place is that there is no longer a need for a follow-up meeting. So um, I wanted to, first of all, clarify that, um, that situation. And secondarily, in terms of the uh, item on our agenda this evening, it was noted during the course of this discussion that Prior to its um, passage in January, the previous ordinance dealing with parking uh, policy changes had been tabled indefinitely. And in, our, in light of our recent conversation um, about uh, Robert's Rules of Orders and the desire to be uh, wholly consistent with process um, and Robert's Rules of Orders, it was felt that in order to ensure the validity of this uh, of these new parking regulations that it would be most prudent to simply reintroduce the legislation this evening. So that is why that item is on our agenda this evening. If you'll note, we're going to expedite the rules and um, we're going to vote on expediting the rules and adding an emergency clause to this new ordinance this evening. The, 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 uh, the body of the ordinance has not changed. It's the same um, legislation that we considered and passed uh, unanimously in January. So this is simply a procedural matter. Um, and I would certainly entertain any questions or comments at this time about this process. I just want to comment that you did accurately and adequately um, explain that the discussions were had by those of us who had issues with the passage of ordinance, well, it's not 8808 anymore, but <laughs> the parking ordinance, let me call it that. Um, and you have adequately um, stated what occurred and I'm pleased to go on forward with this tonight. Very good. Thank you, Sandy. Are there any other council committee reports? Uh, Mr. President, two items related to what you had just talked about. One is, uh, well, kind of related. Last uh, meeting there was a suggestion to look into the possibility of extending the park downtown parking holiday through the end of March and you were going to meet with uh, Brian Bishong and the administration, um, would you like to give an update on that? I did. Um, yes, certainly. And as I expressed to you in a private conversation earlier this week, I did discuss that matter with both Lori and Brian and received a strong recommendation from both of them that from a, uh, a financial uh, consideration that we that that would not be an action that would be wise for us to take at this time, considering the account balances in the in the parking um, the fund that we are looking at now, frankly, as a result of uh, the parking uh, holiday that was instituted in August, it just does not felt it would be prudent to extend that parking holiday at this point in time. So it's not my belief that we'll be doing that. Um, <clears throat> two, two items. One, do you recall the amount, that, the, the approximate amount of a hit that we would take in the parking fund over those three months? I, I can't answer that question, Brian, is that, I, I hate to put you on the spot, but, um, you know, I can tell you that the, uh, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, Brian, but the, the previous estimate that we had received from, from Brian in terms of the parking um, holiday that was implemented in August that would take us up to when we normally would institute the parking holiday in what, late November, early December, was approaching $50,000. Okay, so, so ballpark. You, yeah, the ballpark. I think you could do the math on that and extrapolate a number of what the cost impact might be if we were to extend it for another period of time. Is this something that would be um, appropriate 
for either a discussion now on council, which I anticipate would be very brief or refer referring to the finance committee, um, a decision like this related to a potential impact on the budget, it would seem that it would involve more than one member of council. I'd be happy to, uh, I guess, take a bit of a straw pull, straw pull as we sit here at, at this time. Is there a majority of council members that feel this is an issue that um, we would care to pursue? Well, from the standpoint of the Finance Committee, I, I would say probably not. Um, <clears throat> the uh, administration might um, have further considerations as they think about the the budget proposals for the following year, but but just my personal view is that we probably would not want to do this at this time. Yeah, Mr. President, I, I don't support it either. I think we're going to struggle enough with making up for the shortfall we created with the, the goodwill measure that we, we just lived through. And uh, I certainly do not support an extended holiday. Thank you. Just wanted to make sure it had its day in court. Sure. Yep. And um, I also don't would not support it. Um, um, I have faith in, in Brian's decision to not suggest that we do that. Um, we did provide for a holiday early, and um, I do believe we're, we're going to have a financial struggle if we do it again. So I am not interested in, 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 in um, entering into a conversation about that any further. Again, my... my uh my thinking is that we would we would discuss it, and if it goes forward, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But I think it's, it was important enough to pursue. Um, the second item uh, is more closely related to uh, the uh, parking, and that has to do with uh, kiosks. And uh, I've been trying to figure out uh, if there's been... Uh, I, whether I personally had some sort of a disconnect between um, the administration making plans with respect to the uh, implementation and the timing of uh, extending the kiosks, and I haven't been. I have. I, I'm still uh, not sure. At what point did I miss an email, or was there uh, some? meeting or uh, some discussion that that I'm not remembering um, it would help me personally if uh, the administration would um, uh, help jog my memory and not now but um, but come up with this is when we decided to uh, uh, to um, extend the kiosk beyond lot two in terms of timing, at you know, what point did, was the did the administration come up with? This is the timing we have for extending it beyond parking lot two. Because I I'd been thinking that you know all this discussion that we'd had, and I went back over the January council meeting as as all of us did, and I read through the uh, the recommendation report from the committee. And I'm trying to figure out where was it that. Um, the decision was made to expand beyond and do it now, and uh, I, I can't find it. And so I would really appreciate it, Lori, if at some point, um, you know, not a great hurry, but at some point you'd say, oh, well, you know, Bill, on this particular date we sent this email or we had this meeting or, or something just to, to help me solve the mystery as to where my lapse is in all of this. Uh, is that, is that good? Very, very good. Thank you. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm glad that, you know, Lori will be able to uh, pursue that. Um, but, you know, as you and I discussed at length in a private conversation or um, at the end of last week, um, I think that it's important that we recognize, number one, that the direction that council took in terms of parking um, and proceeding specifically with kiosks was clear. It was a unanimous um, vote, and the discussion... It took place at the, the meeting that you referred to in January was conclusive. We, we talked about kiosks, and, and that was a consistent um, topic of conversation. So it should not have been a surprise, I, in my view, that we were going to be proceeding in that direction. 
in terms of communication that took place, um, notifying council of specific dates, um, in terms of in, in the implementation of that policy that council um, uh, adopted in January, I think that we need to um, kind of tip our hat to um, the the task that we um, give the administration. We set the course, and when it comes time to implementing those course, they're the professionals and we trust them to do their work. There are many things that happen where we don't necessarily get emails notifying us of tasks that take place, um, you know, monumental tasks take place. And I can respect the, the fact that this is, um, you know, this discussion about kiosks is a bit different because of the public nature of the discussion. But I just think in general terms, it's a bit unreasonable for us to expect that the administration is going to provide us daily or weekly email notifications on things that they're doing across the multitude of departments in terms of implementing policies that, that we have approved. So I, I don't want to be confrontational with you about that, but I just felt like that was worth saying. Well, I, it's not my intent to be confrontational, but there are a few points I need to make in response. One <coughs> is uh, I went through those minutes and I read through the legislation and one could view those minutes in, with the perspective of the kiosks being only implemented in lot two. And so there was, and go, go listen to it again with that mindset. And uh, it wasn't overt in saying that is just lot two, but it wasn't overt in saying we're expanding beyond lot two and at this point. So in terms of the supporting evidence you give, I don't, I don't believe it's as solid as you may think. And in terms of uh, the administration um, giving us uh, an incredible amount of information on every decision they make, uh, I, I definitely agree with you on that. But something that, as you mentioned, directly impacts the, uh, the citizenry as much as kiosks do, and uh, the feedback that at least I received on the kiosk, and I think others as well, uh, is it would, it would put it in the category of perhaps we should have our finger on the pulse a bit more. And uh, so, yeah, if, if, uh, if there is no email that says this is what we decided, council, and here's an information, then I would chalk it up to, uh, well, that's a judgment call on how much you tell council and how much you don't. So, and that's fine. If it, it will put my mind at ease either way. If there's an email that said it and, and I just somehow got by me, amazing how many emails we get. And, uh, and if there isn't one, then okay, there, there isn't one. Uh, but <laughs> the January meeting did not definitively say that we were going to expand the kiosks and do them at this point. Now, I think the, the movement, the, the understanding was that kiosks would go beyond lot two at some point. Uh, the extent to which it would go beyond lot two, <coughs> I, I didn't think that it would be as extensive as it appears to be now. And in terms of the timing of it, uh, coming up with a kiosk uh, version two, you know, the more user-friendly one, uh, had I known, and again, it's, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm saying it could be my, my, my bad on this, but had I known that it would have been, uh, well, well, we'll have the kiosk in lot two and, and just blanket the other lots without getting a, a, a read on how friendly they are. I, again, I'm, I'm, as I usually do, I'm saying more than I need to. Point is, I would appreciate the, uh, the information. Point taken. Is there any other discussions? Uh, Mr. President, I think... Um, as um, one of the people that per participated in the um, several months of discussion with the committee involving downtown folks, um, and including some public, public meetings, and meetings where council participated, I think a really important point is that uh, there, there were a lot of pieces to the puzzle. The kiosks were one piece of the puzzle. Other things would not work so well. If we if we tried some other means of collecting the money, uh, the the police department had a very specific role in figuring out uh, what methods would work. They looked at a variety of options, 
And um, I'm just very satisfied uh, with the work of this of the downtown committee, and uh, I, it just all goes together. And so uh, um, I'm not exactly sure what you're concerned with here, but I, I think what we we've got before us here is going to work really well. I think it's the best possible approach. Well, part of my uh, concern is not concern, my confusion is uh, the downtown parking committee report has a section on kiosk and it's, it's uh, well written, but it, it, it says uh, there was uh, quote, there was also feedback that should the city go to kiosks in all lots, small shelters or covers should be installed to protect customers from the elements. So what, what, what strikes me is, should the city go to kiosks in all lots? So that wording from January 11th from the Downtown Parking Committee report lends evidence that perhaps at that point um, they were not sure, they were not sure uh, whether the city was going to go to kiosks in all lots, and it doesn't mention the, the implementation plan. So all I'm saying is just a little bit of information would be helpful so I can sort out how, how I got... Uh, uh, dis <coughs> oh, I have to disconnect. That's that's all. I I don't mean for it to take this long to say that. Thank you. Okay, would you please read us or lead us through the reading of legislation? Legislation for first reading, resolution number three seven four eight for first reading, resolution transferring previously appropriated funds. Mr. President, Mr. Jeffers, I move we suspend the rules and give resolution three seven four eight at second and third readings. Second. Been moved and seconded. Kay, would you please call the roll? Harold? Yes. Hollenbaugh? Yes. Jeffers? Yes. Robinette? Yes. Roland? Yes. Zanfordino? Yes. Osbacher? Yes. Motion passes. The rules are suspended for resolution 3748. Resolution number 3748 for second and third reading. Resolution transferring previously appropriated funds. Mr. President? Mr. Jeffers? I move we adopt resolution 3748. Second. second. Been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hey, would you please call the roll? Hollenbach? Yes. Jeffers? Yes. Robinette? Yes. Roland? Yes. Zanfordino? Yes. Osbacher? Yes. Harold? Yes. Motion passes. Resolution 3748 is adopted. Resolution number 3749 for first reading. Resolution authorizing the mayor of the city of Bowling Green, Ohio, to file an annual application and a five-year consolidated plan and execute a contract upon grant application approval under the Community Development Block Grant Entitlement Program as authorized by the Housing and Community Development Act of 1974 as amended. <clears throat> Ordinance number 8808 for first reading. Ordinance amending and adopting section 76.23 C and D and section 76.24 of the codified ordinances of the City of Bowling Green, Ohio regarding operation of meters, coin deposit, and time mechanism and parking time limits, and amending and adopting Section 35.70 regarding city fees and fees charged for services, and authorizing the municipal administrator to enter into a contract for parking equipment and declaring an emergency. Mr. President. Mr. Jeffers. I move we suspend the rules and give Ordinance 8808 at second and third readings. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Kay, would you please call the roll? Jeffers. Yes. Robinette. Yes. Roland. Yes. Zanfordino. Yes. Osbacher. Yes. Harold. Yes. Hollenbaugh. Yes. Motion passes. The rules are suspended for Ordinance 8808. Ordinance number 8808 for second and third reading. Ordinance amending and adopting Section 76.23C and D and Section 76.24 of the codified ordinances of the City of Bowling Green, Ohio regarding operation of meters, coin deposit, and time mechanism and parking time limits and amending and adopting section 35.70 regarding city fees and fees charged for services and authorizing the municipal administrator to enter into a contract for parking equipment and declaring an emergency. Mr. President. Mr. Jeffers. I move we adopt the emergency clause for ordinance 8808. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Okay, would you please call the roll? Robinette? Yes. Roland? Yes. Zanfordino? Yes. Osbacher? Yes. Harold? Yes. Hollenbaugh? Yes. Jeffers? Yes. Motion passes. The emergency clause is adopted for Ordinance 8808. Mr. President? Mr. Jeffers? I move we adopt Ordinance 8808. Second. 
Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Okay, would you please call the roll? Roland? Yes. Zanfordino? Yes. Osbacher? Yes. Harold? Yes. Hollenbach? Yes. Jeffers? Yes. Robinette? Yes. Motion passes. Ordinance 8808 is adopted. Ordinance number 8809 for first reading. Ordinance authorizing the municipal administrator to request proposals and enter into a contract for the purchase of transportation service for the Bowling Green Transit Program. Legislation for second reading. Resolution number 3745 for second reading. Resolution authorizing the sale or of obsolete or unfit municipally owned personal property, which is not needed for public use by internet auction and authorizing the municipal administrator to enter into a contract with GovDeals Incorporated for ongoing internet auctions for calendar year 2020. Resolution number 3747 for second reading, resolution authorizing the mayor of the city of Bowling Green, Ohio, to enter into a programmatic agreement between the city of Bowling Green and the State Historic Preservation Office, formerly known as Ohio Historic Preservation Office, for the administration of activities funded by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development and the Ohio Development Services Agency, formerly known as Ohio Department of Development. Ordinance number 8803 for second reading, ordinance amending and adopting section 33.04 of the codified ordinances of the City of Bowling Green, Ohio, relative to pay scales for seasonal employees. Ordinance number 8804 for second reading, ordinance authorizing the utilities director to enter into an agreement or agreements with AMP Transmission LLC to provide a fourth transmission interconnection. Ordinance number 8805 for second reading, ordinance authorizing the utilities director to enter into an agreement with AMP Inc. for the renewal of the Efficiency Smart Program. Ordinance number 8806 for second reading, ordinance authorizing the utilities director to enter into and complete a property purchase agreement with Ross Family Farms Limited. Ordinance number 8807 for second reading, ordinance authorizing the utilities director to advertise their bids and enter into a contract or contracts for supplying annual inventory requirements, underground and overhead lines insurance, sale of scrap materials and participation in the AMP Joint Purchasing Program in 2020. <laughs> Legislation for third reading. Ordinance number 8800 for third reading. Ordinance amending and adopting section 33.23B and E of the codified ordinances of the City of Bowling Green, Ohio regarding medical, dental, and vision insurance. Mr. President. Mr. Jeffers. I move we adopt ordinance 8800. Second. second. Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Okay, would you please call the roll? Zanfordino? Yes. Osbacher? Yes. Harold? Yes. Hollenbaugh? Yes. Jeffers? Yes. Robinette? Yes. Roland? Yes. <coughs> motion passes. Ordinance 8800 is adopted. It completes the items on our agenda this evening. Is there any other business to come before council? Mr. Mayor. Do you want to stand up? <laughs> <laughs> Not as a target. Thank you. <laughs> There's snipers everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to thank you for your leadership and wish you all the very, very best tomorrow. Thanks, Mayor. Appreciate all the support. Tomorrow's a big day in our community. I really hope that everybody here and everybody that sees this um, will um, exercise um they're bright and vote tomorrow it's a very important um uh part of our democracy a right that many people who have come before us have sacrificed um great things for us to uh, to have this right and i really hope that everybody takes advantage of it and gets out and votes tomorrow is there any other business to come before council is there a motion for adjournment so moved. So, second Moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>